Hoaxes and fake video game rumors have existed for almost as long as video games themselves. In the 1988 guidebook How to Win at Nintendo Games, the author Jeff Rovin claimed he had heard of a secret chocolate factory level hidden within Super Mario Bros. for the NES. This was, however, a complete fabrication. Sonic and Tails in Melee, Luigi in Super Mario 64, Yoshi as a Pokemon, these are classic examples of hoaxes that fooled us into believing stuff about our favorite games that simply weren't true. Now, what is a hoax? By definition, it's a humorous or malicious deception. In terms of video games, Hoaxes can be fabricated info regarding any game or franchise, created with the intent to fool people into believing whatever the creator claims. Be it a doctored photo, a fake leak, or sometimes even a full mock-up video, people have created some insane video game rumors and hoaxes over the years, many of which people actually believed. So, let's take a look at some of them. Let this video serve as an interesting look back at hoaxes from years gone by. Maybe you were fooled by some of these? I know I was. With all of that said, let's begin. <laughs> One of the most common forms of video game hoaxes are ones that fake completely new unannounced games. We'll talk about some of those later, but what about a hoax that technically was a real game, but was used to fool people into believing it was much more than it really was? With such a strange setup, you know this one's going to be interesting. Back in June 2004, an eBay auction appeared for a Game Boy Advance Kirby game called Kirby Red Diamond, a game that previously had never been heard of online. The auction showed the game's box art, which looked fairly unique compared to the previously released GBA Kirby games. When the auction first went up, this picture was all Kirby fans had to go off of. What was this game? Was it real? Obviously, it was very strange that neither Nintendo nor HAL had made reference to such a game, so fans were immediately skeptical. The auction only included this one picture of the game's box, with no info on the game itself. The auction didn't make any reference to it being an unreleased or promotional game either, making it very perplexing. It was quickly brushed off as a fabricated game. Despite the box looking authentic, maybe the person behind the auction created it to get a rise out of the Kirby fanbase at the time. The auction was even pulled early, so no one was able to win the game and conclude what it was. However, shortly after the eBay auction was pulled, a Yahoo auction based in Australia for the same game was listed, and appeared to be from a seller who had no connections to the original eBay seller. So wait, multiple copies of this exist? Maybe it is more than just a hoax. This Yahoo auction was helpful as it included a picture of the back of the game's box. However, the pictures and text were pulled straight from Nightmare and Dreamland's packaging, and the copyright info, while appearing legit, said 2001, despite the first Kirby GBA game being released in 2002. Things were starting to fall apart. When questioned about the game's authenticity, the seller pulled the auction. Again, no one could purchase the game and test it out to see what it really was. This game appeared back when the internet was relatively primitive, and these two copies were the only copies of the game that showed up for a while. Kirby Red Diamond became a bit of an overnight Kirby mystery. If there were two different copies of the game in different parts of the world, surely there's more to this, right? Meanwhile, at the same time of these auctions, the owner of the fan site, Kirby's Rainbow Resort, contacted Nintendo customer support about the game, where they confirmed it was a fake. They had no records of the game in their database, and shortly after this letter, the existing auctions were cancelled. It became pretty clear that Kirby Red Diamond was unfortunately nothing more than a potentially bootleg hoax. Despite the fairly legit looking box art, Kirby Red Diamond was indeed no different than games like Sonic 3 Fighter Sonic, a bootleg GBA game that had pretty convincing box and cart designs, while the game itself is very lacking. More copies of this game would appear over the years, and unlike Fighter Sonic, these were actually dumped, so you can play Red Diamond through the use of an emulator. So, what was really on this cartridge along. Well, the game launches with this sloppily put together splash screen, saying Red Diamond, Kibbies, Star. And then it transitions to another splash screen, which is this really great MS Paint quality drawing of Kirby on a beach. But then, the never-before-seen game begins. Yep, this whole time, Kirby Red Diamond was just a bootleg copy of Kirby's Adventure for the NES. This game is played on the GBA through the fan-made Pocket NES emulator, which bootleggers often use to make shoddy NES to GBA ports to sell on cartridges like this. The rest of the game is completely unaltered. What a letdown! What's funny is that Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland itself is a GBA remake of Kirby's Adventure. Why didn't they just flash that onto these carts instead of this weird custom NES ROM? In any case, I've seen many claim that this box is for an actual unreleased or rare GBA Kirby game, when that is clearly not true. It's just a pretty nice looking bootleg. I do have to commend the box art though, as it uses excellent edits of pre-existing Kirby artwork to make a very unique composition. It even has a custom logo. If I saw this in a store when I was younger, it would have fooled me. I mean, it did when I first learned about it, which is why it's included here. As most bootlegs go, there are multiple editions of this game, with some being titled Kirby Star Red Diamond. Whatever it's called, it's fake. 
It's common knowledge that the third Legend of Zelda game, A Link to the Past, was originally released on the Super Famicom in 1991. This means A Link to the Past was released four years after Zelda 2 in Japan. That's a long development time. Because of this long gap, it had been speculated that the third Zelda game was originally not meant for the Super Nintendo, but instead the original NES. This rumor had completely no evidence backing it up. That was until October 15th, 2005, when an eBay auction went up for a never-before-seen Zelda 3 NES prototype cartridge. According to the listing, the game was titled The Legend of Zelda 3 The Triforce Saga, and was dated with a 1990 copyright. Was this a never-before-seen take on a third Zelda game made before the NES was phased out? The seller claimed that they found the cartridge at a flea market, and had very little info on what it was or what it even contained. Unfortunately, the listing, which started at a modest $20, appeared very shady. See, the seller claimed to have very little information of what was actually on this cartridge. You'd, uh, you'd think that'd be pretty important stuff to know, right? All they knew was that it was a prototype of a cancelled third NES Zelda. The seller claimed that they were always too busy to check what was actually on the cartridge, which makes no sense when you know it's a prototype, knowing that any actual proof would net you a ton more money for it. People weren't buying too much into this story, but to increase the believability, the seller eventually supplied a screenshot of the game actually running on his NES. If he had an NES, I don't know what took him so long to simply pop it in, but here we go. The picture shows the game's title screen. It actually looks decently convincing. Well, the picture is of course very blurry and this is the only image the seller supplied, but hey, it's original. It shows the game's logo as well as other unique assets. In the end, the auction sold for $3,000 and sold to an eBay user with the name Knight7. While the buyer remains a mystery and I'm sure they were eventually refunded their money, the seller themselves claimed the buyer might have a connection to the popular Canadian video game development team Silicon Knights. However, this appears to be simply due to the buyer's display name. As a representative of Silicon Knights quickly shot down this rumor. It's likely Knight7 was simply an eager collector or preservationist, who was just excited to have and hopefully dump a cancelled never-before-seen Zelda game. Unfortunately, that isn't what happened. While it was pretty obvious from the start, this game and the listing were a hoax. I'll admit, the cartridge label and title screen looked pretty convincing, and in 2005, I would have believed this. But the truth here is that Zelda 3, A Link to the Past, was always conceived to be for the Super Nintendo. Nintendo was already developing the game as early as 1988, which contradicts the 19 90 copyright date on this card. Also, in that screenshot, that's a standard NES, which can't even natively play prototype cartridges. So, unfortunately, the Zelda 3 NES card on eBay was a hoax, but a pretty memorable one. This wasn't the only hoax like this one either. Prototypes and betas are often the subject of hoaxes. Without a dump of a prototype existing, it can be pretty easy to trick people into believing you have a super rare early version of a game. People make fabricated or reproduction carts of old games all the time. Faking a prototype or information on a prototype isn't unbelievable. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is a monumental Sonic game for many reasons, but one of the greatest has to be that it introduced Knuckles the Echidna into the series. Sonic characters always go through a lot of changes before reaching their final design. A prime example is Sonic himself, as well as Terios the Hedgehog who became Shadow. With Knuckles, however, not much is known about his development. Apparently, he was envisioned to have a Jamaican accent and his original name was Dreads. Apart from that though, it seems Knuckles always remained fairly consistent with what was seen in the final game, or at least that was believed until August 2012. When a Sonic Stadium user claimed to have found a childhood magazine of his, coming from Portugal, which appeared to have never-before-seen screenshots from an early beta build of Sonic 3. The screenshots lined up with verified beta screenshots we've had for years of Sonic 3, with a notable detail being that Sonic uses his Sonic 2 sprite. Unfortunately, few beta builds have leaked of Sonic 3 over the years, unlike Sonic 2, so relatively little is known about Sonic 3's development. Because of that, these screenshots caught everyone's attention. If they were only shown off in a magazine from Portugal, it makes some sense that no one online had found them until 2012. Obviously, the big find in these screenshots was this character here. That's clearly not Knuckles, no. That would be Dreads the Hedgehog. That's right, the user was claiming that Knuckles was originally a red Sonic recolor in an early beta build of Sonic 3. The user provided multiple screenshots. There was even a screenshot of him in a one-player version of Desert Palace, which in the final game is a zone only found in competition mode. If this was real, this was clearly a very early build of the game. Many Sonic Stadium users, including myself, believed in the authenticity of these screenshots for a while. Even if these were technically fake, but the magazine itself was real, these pictures could have been mock-ups the magazine made themselves. Maybe they heard about a new red character in Sonic 3 who can glide, but didn't have screenshots of him yet. Even if they were mock-ups, these red Sonic pictures could have been huge. They could have been the Dust Hill Zone screenshot of Sonic 3. Knuckles originally being a red hedgehog also kind of lines up with this official concept art of him, where he shares much more in common with Sonic's design than his final look. Is this artwork of dreads? Unfortunately, no. This ended up being a hoax, and all of the screenshots were fakes. This hoax shared a 
lot in common with the Zelda 3 one. The user provided little evidence that this page came from a real full magazine, for one thing. There were tons of inconsistencies, even looking at the original pictures. And if you think about it, with how diligent the Sonic fanbase is with discoveries like this, how would no one have found this until 2012? It just didn't make much sense, as much as people wanted to believe. For the entire month of August, the user kept up the lie. A find like this should be huge, so people tried very hard to either prove or disprove it. The user, though, eventually came clean, and confessed that the screenshots and magazine as a whole were fake. Knuckles was not a red Sonic in the beta of Sonic 3, and the hoax ended up being a pretty big waste of time. It's upsetting, as finds like what this would have been are very rare nowadays. It would have been incredible to discover something so huge about Sonic 3 so long after its release. Oh well, at the very least, at least these screenshots are real. So imagine the look on my face when right after I finished editing this segment of the video, you know, the one about Sonic 3's development, a true genuine prototype of Sonic 3 was revealed and released online. That's right, in November of 2019, the good folks over at the Hidden Palace were holding a Sonic Month, where they released a bunch of never-before-seen Sonic game prototypes. These included a Sonic CD prototype, a Sonic Chaos prototype with numerous differences compared to the final release, multiple Sonic 2 betas, and finally, on November 16th, after much hype and anticipation, they revealed the world's first ever early Sonic 3 prototype. I watched the reveal of this live on Twitch with my friends while it was happening, and let me just say, this is one of the most exciting discoveries the Sonic community has had in decades. Here's a recreation of my initial reaction. Sega. What is this? WHAT?! Let's go over some of the differences. The Sega splash screen is a modified version of the one in Sonic 2, showing that Sonic 3 was indeed built off of Sonic 2, just like how Sonic 2 was built off of Sonic 1. The palette of the Sega logo then gets all messed up to lead to this incredible title screen. I was blown away when I first saw this, like, no way! Sonic's intro does not involve Super Sonic, but instead he surfs onto Angel Island. These sprites were in the final game, but went unused. It's fantastic to see them in action here. The Knuckles part of the intro is unfinished, with Knuckles using some very early unused sprites. He sure isn't a red Sonic here. Just like the magazine screenshots, Sonic and Tails used their Sonic 2 sprites. For the sprites that didn't exist in Sonic 2, they used new original ones not seen in the final game. The zone order is different as well, as Flying Battery is in between Carnival Night and Ice Cap, for example. One of the biggest revelations in this prototype, however, occurred when we first heard Knuckles' theme. It's the one from the PC release of Sonic 3. Wait, does that mean? The PC music was the original soundtrack for the game. The history behind Sonic 3's OST is something I couldn't possibly have time to get into here, but this just adds a new layer to whatever happened behind the scenes. It is awesome to have official 16-bit versions of these songs, though the whole soundtrack sounds unfinished. There was so much that was unearthed thanks to this prototype being found. Sonic has unfinished moves that weren't used in the final game, one of which being very similar to the Drop Dash from Sonic Mania, I am so happy this prototype is now out in the wild. This one is dated November 3rd, 1993. That's how early it is. It's so crazy that we can still discover so much about Sonic 3's development so far out from its original release date. Thank you to the Hidden Palace, the Cutting Room Floor, and to everyone who made this discovery possible. If you wish to learn more about this prototype, I've linked the Cutting Room Floor article, as well as a playlist of the entire soundtrack of the prototype in the description below. But anyway, let's get back to hoaxes now, shall we? One of the most classic video game hoaxes of all time has to be playing as Luigi in Super Mario 64. I'm sure you're expecting me to go over this one, right? Well, too bad. Waluigi time. They say history repeats itself, and it absolutely did here. While not playable in the N64 original, Luigi was playable in Super Mario 64 DS, alongside Mario, Yoshi, and Wario. However, four playable characters wasn't enough for some people, as fans began to comment on a certain character's absence. If Wario gets to be in the game, why isn't Waluigi playable? It was a complete injustice. Surely he's in the game somewhere. It's not like the game's working title was Super Mario 64 times 4 or anything, nor did Nintendo focus heavily on four-player multiplayer while marketing the game, there must be a fifth playable character somewhere, and that character must be Waluigi. To be fair, it was upsetting that Waluigi was the only bro left out of this remake, so perhaps he really was a super secret unlockable character. The room in Peach's castle where you can change characters has this odd extra white door. It doesn't fit with the other doors at all, almost like it's hiding something, or someone. This rumor was basically Luigi in Mario 64 for the next generation, and I remember it being spread around a ton. I distinctly remember one of my friends coming up to me at school and claiming that he unlocked 
fact Waluigi in Mario 64 DS. It has to be the truth, right? And just like with the Luigi rumor, a ton of fake screenshots popped up online, fueling the rumor fire. However, no one contributed more to this rumor than Justin Brown of Nintendo World Report, who created this fake magazine scan for April Fool's Day 2005. Once April Fool's passed though, the image was spread around as if it was legit. The magazine scan, which came from an unknown magazine, boasted that Waluigi was indeed playable in Mario 64 DS. You just had to find him. The hoax used a custom-made model of Waluigi, as well as plenty of doctored screenshots, all of which added a lot of legitimacy to it. It even detailed Waluigi's special moves, and that he would unlock a special alternate ending to the game. Sure, looking back at it now, it doesn't exactly look very believable, but to a 2005 internet combined with how fitting Waluigi would have been for the game, Purple Prizes over here was believed by many. Of course, thanks to data mining and looking at the files of games, we always know exactly what a game contains. When analyzed, there is no trace of Waluigi in the final build of Mario 64 DS, proving he isn't an unlockable character. Though for some reason a purple rabbit is seen in the game's manual, maybe Waluigi was planned at some point. Unfortunately, or fortunately depending on how you look at it, the existence of data mining erases much of the believability of these hoaxes. But back in 2005, that wasn't very common. So to a kid who didn't have much access to the internet, they totally could have believed Waluigi was truly in 64DS. While Luigi was eventually included in 64DS, there is yet to be an official version of Mario 64 with Waluigi playable. Hopefully that happens someday. While it'll always be disappointing he wasn't a playable character in the game, for such a jokester character like Waluigi, it is quite fitting for him to have such a foolish hoax. It's time we pay tribute to who I consider to be the undisputed king of video game hoaxes, the man who has produced more of these than anyone else. You may not know his name, but I bet most of you have seen his work. It's time we talk about the works of Pablo Belmont. Pablo is responsible for some of the most legendary video game hoaxes of all time, such as the Nintendo On console trailer, Super Mario Galaxy DS, various Zelda mockups, and more. Let's go through some of them. The year was 2005, and every Nintendo fan everywhere couldn't wait to see what Nintendo was cooking up next. Codename Revolution. With a name like that, it had to be something big. Speculation went wild. What could this new console be? This speculation led to many crazy mock-ups of what the system could be. I'm personally still waiting for that portable GameCube. In the end, the Nintendo Wii was indeed a revolution, but before it was officially revealed at E3 2005, Pablo created one of the most ambitious hoaxes I've ever seen. Shortly before E3, where Nintendo was to give details on the revolution, he uploaded a 6 minute long reveal trailer posed as an official leak. It showcased Nintendo's next console, the Nintendo On. On. That's right, Pablo created an entire console trailer mock-up just for the goof of it, and for 2005 standards, and considering this was all made by one person, it's insane. The trailer reveals that Nintendo On is a virtual reality headset, which would have been way before its time in 2005. The trailer showcases everything one would want to know about this hypothetical console, such as that the console would have incredible processing power, and early on would feature games for series like Metroid and Mario. While the models used can look off at times, this is a phenomenal fake, and I believe it's the greatest Nintendo hoax of all time given the circumstances and how creative it is. As cool as the Nintendo On could have been, it was of course nothing more than a fake, being proved a hoax shortly after being revealed, when the real Nintendo Revolution was revealed at E3 2005. Fake console mockups are nothing new, but stuff like the Wii phone have nothing on the Nintendo On. This fooled so many people back in the day, and hey, maybe someday, something like this will be a reality. While Pablo is perhaps most well known in the realm of hoaxes for the Nintendo On, it isn't the only one he's made, and one that actually fooled me when I was younger was this, a leaked reveal trailer for Super Mario Galaxy DS. I'm sure many of you remember this one. In December of 2007, shortly after the release of Super Mario Galaxy, a video appeared online that claimed to be a trailer for a special Super Mario Galaxy DS minigame, which could be unlocked by connecting the Wii game to your DS. It's pretty much like how Animal Crossing for the GameCube connected to the GBA. The trailer revealed that once you have beaten the game 100% as both Mario and Luigi, you could cash in your power stars and unlock a new galaxy. This new galaxy would contain a transporter, which would allow you to connect your DS to your Wii through DS download play and unlock Super Mario Galaxy DS. Nowadays, this seems fairly far-fetched, but in 2007, the video was uploaded with no context, and many were fooled into believing it. The fake leak begins with a Wii logo, as any official Nintendo trailer would. Then it says, uh, Christmas math? 
Maybe this was meant to be revealed around Christmas of 2007? Not sure. Nowadays, the trailer is clearly fake. I mean, none of the assets of the Wii portion even match the official game. But there's a reason for that. The production of this hoax is actually even more impressive than it already appeared. According to Pablo, this hoax was created for the final project for his design studies class he was taking at the time. The project tasked the students to create a viral video. That is, a video that could amass 500,000 views. Given his history with creating viral hoaxes, this was a no-brainer. Super Mario Galaxy was the new and exciting Nintendo game at the time, so Pablo hatched this brilliant hoax and went into production. Here's the thing though, yes, none of the Wii assets match the actual game. Here's why. Believe it or not, Galaxy wasn't even out at the time while he was creating this. And even if it was, it wasn't exactly easy to fully rip and use in-game Wii models at the time. Because of this, everything you see in this video is completely remade from scratch. Pablo referenced all of the available trailers for the game at the time to remake stuff like Mario, Luigi, the game's HUD, even the planets used in the trailer. When you know that, this hoax is stunning. How one man in 2006 7 was able to recreate Super Mario Galaxy in a way that seemed convincing is remarkable. The DS segment uses properly scaled, low-poly models and graphics just like a DS version of the game would. Not only did Pablo recreate the Wii version of the game, but he made two sets of assets for this hoax, as well as the fantastic UI and logo seen in the trailer as well. Something that no one seems to realize about this trailer is that when the Galaxy DS logo is being revealed, the E in Super is reversed. I guess this was a gag to show people who believed this. The end of the 2007 upload of the hoax was the real kicker though. As it claimed, for every Power Star collected in the DS version of the game, you would get 10 Wii points to use on the Wii Shop channel. Basically, imagine if Nintendo made it so that every Power Moon collected in Super Mario Odyssey could be converted to eShop cash. Wouldn't that be nuts? Safe to say, this trailer fooled many Mario fans at the time. Back when the trailer was new, one of my school friends told me about it and was convinced it was real. Only to be crushed when all he got for beating Super Luigi Galaxy was this Wii photo image. I think this is my favorite of Pablo's hoaxes. It's such a creative yet believable concept. And yet for his design studies final, the video only got him a B+. Nowadays, Pablo mostly focuses on freelance work for actual video games, but he has an incredible resume of hoaxes that extend far beyond the Nintendo On or Super Mario Galaxy DS. If you want to learn more about his work, I recommend either going to his website or checking out this great video by AK Family Home, in which he covers all of Pablo's hoaxes in great detail. I'll link both of them in the description. And there you have it, a look at various video game hoaxes from throughout the years. Nowadays, hoaxes tend to come more in the form of leaks, especially with series like Sonic and Super Smash Bros. Most of the time, these leaks turn out to be complete fabrications, but they're fun. In my eyes, hoaxes and fake leaks keep the excitement for these franchises going strong. Of course, it can be annoying when something you wanted to be true turns out to be a hoax, but that's why you shouldn't take much of what you see online at face value. Looking back, obviously stuff like Kirby Red Diamond were fake, but now that game is a good memory. And it's sad that Super Mario Galaxy DS wasn't real, but hey, it's definitely real in your memories. I think my favorites out of what I've covered here are Kirby Red Diamond, Dreads the Hedgehog, and all of Pablo Belmont's work. These seriously fooled me, and that goes to show how well done they were. With how much fun they are, I wouldn't mind being fooled by hoaxes like these for years to come.